Carolyn, you're a world-leading authority on Parkinson's disease. Welcome to Neura. Please give me an idea of how much of a problem Parkinson's disease is worldwide. Well, thanks, thanks Carol, it's nice to be here. Um, but while Parkinson's disease is um, you know, one of the major health challenges of the 21st century, it's the commonest movement disorder uh, that affects our society. Um, it's, uh, it's, the, it's a neurodegenerative condition which affects over 100,000 Australians. And, so, and treatments are available, but uh, the challenges of trying to protect those patients from progressing from their illness is still an unmet clinical need. And then how does this link to your other work on mitochondrial disease? There's a connection, presumably. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as opposed to Parkinson's disease, which is a common disease, mitochondrial disease is a rare genetic disorder. And, uh, but the fundamental problem with um, both conditions are that the mitochondria are impaired in function. So mitochondrial disease um, is due to problems in the, mit uh, in the mitochondrial function. Um, and so patients have problems with energy supply, which is what the purpose of mitochondria are. In Parkinson's disease, one of the first problems uh, that occurs to the brain cells that are affected in Parkinson's disease is the cells lose their energy. They lose their mitochondrial function. And so by understanding how mitochondrial function works in both patients with primary mitochondrial diseases and those people who have disorders where the mitochondrial function is impaired as a secondary part of the process, then we can actually help both diseases by improving or concentrating on um, trying to improve the function of mitochondria. I understand, sounds like a perfect marriage. <laughs> um, so you've recently relocated to Neura and you're bringing most of your research and clinical team with you. This is gonna involve complicated appointments at, at Neura, at the University of New South Wales, at the Prince of Wales Hospital. Um, how do you see that unfolding and what do you hope to bring to the Randwick Health and Innovation Precinct? Yeah, thanks. Well, I mean, that looks obviously exciting. Um, you know, being able to bring a clinical team over and a research team over, which tightly inter interact with each other is a wonderful opportunity. And very grateful for the campus to uh, have that uh, vision that uh, translational research is something that needs to be invested in. So by bringing in the clinical team, um, obviously we'll be interacting with um, you know, Prince of Wales, um, Southeastern uh, Health Service, uh, which will be great. Uh, and we're all part of, we have been working in um, a, a local health district anyway. Um, and then to integrate so closely and with great proximity with the research team is going to be a wonderful opportunity. And we'll improve the interaction between both the clinicians and the scientists uh, from both ends. So let's break this down into real, real impact terms. What's one of the new therapeutic approaches that you're working on for Parkinson's and what will it achieve? Uh, well, one of my favourite topics, uh, Carol. Uh, so what we're trying to do is um, use a, a method to improve mitochondrial function uh, to slow down the process of neurodegeneration. What we've discovered is a way to provide a sustainable, renewable source of energy by overexpressing a protein which improves mitochondrial quality and function. Um, this is, um, hinges on a protein called NIX, um, and uh, by overexpressing that, we know that patients, some patients with uh, genetic forms of Parkinson's disease can actually improve um, and prevent themselves from having Parkinson's disease. We're now going to apply this um, uh, to uh, neurons that we grow in the dish and also into um, models of Parkinson's disease so that we can develop a safe uh, therapy uh, for treating patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, and so this has been really a, a lovely fusion between um, our understandings of mitochondrial function that we've learned from patients who don't have uh, good mitochondrial function and then apply it to other neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's disease. And you're both, you're, you're that you know, rare wonder, both a clinician and a scientist. So what part do clinical trials play in your research? Well, clinical trials are the great way that we can offer new treatments to patients with, uh, with clinical problems. So it provides an opportunity to provide new treatments under a, a, um, a safe and um, closely observable uh, environment um, so that we can see the effects of new treatments um, that can um, be effective or potentially effective in our patients. So we're hoping to run um, lots of clinical trials here at the, at the Neuro Campus um, and to really become a clinical trial centre for these disorders. I'll be looking forward to seeing that in, in action. <laughs> well, I hope that all of the patients and the, and the clinicians and scientists do too. So we're looking forward to doing that. Thank you, Karen. Pleasure.